What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all of my appliances that I have. This is not even all of them sitting out here and I didn't realize how many I had until I like pulled them all out from the woodwork. <laughs> it was a lot. Me and my husband live in a 200 square foot tiny house so we don't have an oven, we don't have a range or any conventional items like that so we really get by with using more appliances that are made for specific things. Obviously we have two instant pots that's key but using other appliances that are more specialty for example like a rice cooker and you know an air fryer we don't really need have the need for a range or an oven which it would be nice i haven't been able to cook muffins or cookies or anything that you can really bake in the two and a half years that we've lived here and it sucks but we'll have an oven soon in our new house that we're building it's just for the time being while living in a 200 square foot house with a 70 square foot kitchen we don't have a lot of space. With that being said, I have a lot of appliances that are really helpful with obviously eating a plant-based diet. Me and my husband are vegan. I've been vegan for six years. He's been vegan a little bit over eight years. And we cook totally oil-free. So I'll be talking about how some of the appliances can really benefit you when you're trying to cook oil-free as well and all of those good things. So I think the best way for me to do this is to go in the order of the appliances that we use most often. And our, our kitchen is just so small that I'm going to have to like pick everything up. But <laughs> this is going to be. We use our Kuku rice cooker every single day. And these are expensive rice cookers. I'm not going to lie to you. We actually got this for free from Kuku probably three and a half, four years ago. So we've had it for a long time. It's worked totally flawlessly. It makes the best sticky rice in the entire world. It has settings for brown rice, gaba rice, um, and it has a keep warm function. So we will make a bunch of rice and then we'll keep it warm for a day or two. And then we don't have to cook rice every single day either. And it stays totally warm and perfect in the Kuku rice cooker. With that being said, I know that they are very expensive rice cookers. They're totally worth it if you've ever wanted one and you just aren't sure about it, I would highly recommend buying a Kaku rice cooker. But as I said, they are expensive. So this one I think was about $500 to $600. I know it's a lot of money um, for a rice cooker, but if you eat rice as much as I do and my husband do, it's totally worth it. We also have an aroma rice cooker that we use that I don't have here right now, but we do have another rice cooker and we use that one when we travel. That one works totally fine as well and I think they run about $30. So really just find whatever fits in your budget. If you're not like the biggest rice aficionado in the entire world, I would totally just go with the aroma rice cooker or a different brand that's a lot less expensive. I know Tomagachis are a lot less expensive as well. They're still a little bit higher of a price point for a rice cooker because I think it's a Japanese brand and Kuku is a Korean brand. So these are made by like the pro rice eaters of the world. The good thing about a rice cooker is that you can cook steel cut oats in it, you can cook quinoa in it, different types of porridge. Um, and it's not, you don't have to just use it for rice. We actually just use this for rice. So that's definitely the appliance that we use every single day without fail. The other one that we use every single day is our Instant Pot. We do have two sizes of an Instant Pot. So we have the three quart and then we have the six quart and people are always asking us what the difference is. Um, obviously the only difference is the size. This one was one of the first ones that we got and it's a little bit different like the buttons on it are different, the cords different. This one has a much more sturdy cord. The biggest thing that I see with people in these is they're afraid of them exploding. I've never had that happen. Um, I've never been afraid of that happening. I just, I don't think that it would happen. And I think the biggest issue that some people have, which sometimes we have it as well, is that sometimes it won't come up to pressure. And the only reason that happens for us is because we fill this too high. So if you fill your Instant Pot too high, sometimes it will weigh it down too much and it won't come up to pressure. The Instant Pot is great because you don't even need a rice cooker if you have one of these. You can cook rice in this, you can cook beans in this, you can cook soups, stews, chilies, oatmeal, literally everything that you can cook from a that kind of perspective that's more of like a mushy thing, you can cook in an Instant Pot. 
And the biggest tip that I would give you guys is you can go on Amazon and you can buy extra little inner pots. So for us, we have two of these in the three quart size and we also have two in the six quart size. The reason that we got the three quart is because for me and Derek, we were finding that we were just making way too much food. So I would say for two people, a three quart um, would be a perfect size for two people or for one person. If you have a family of more than two people, you might want to go with the six quart. I think they even have, they have an eight quart as well. And I would get something like that if I had a family of, I would say more than four, or if I was doing conventions or if I had some type of a business. But I think for a typical family, you know, of three or four people, a six quart is totally fine. If you're a single person or a double duplicate, if you're a couple, <laughs> I would highly recommend the three quart. And then the thing that you can do, like I said, is go on Amazon, buy a few of these extra inner pots. And you can even buy lids for them now. Instant Pot makes their own lids for these. So what we do is I'll make two batches of something. I'll make, for example, myself some pea soup. And then if Derek wants something different, like corn chowder, I'll make that as well. And then we can just put the lid on it, put it in the fridge. It's just a way to get more variety with a smaller Instant Pot. Or you could cook rice in this and put it in the fridge and then use it as your rice cooker as well. I would say out of all of the appliances that I have, an Instant Pot is probably the one I would recommend the most other than my Vitamix, which I'll talk about right now. The next appliance I use every single day is my Vitamix. And I mostly just use this for um, basically everything that you need a blender for. But I also use it as a food processor. So I don't have a food processor anymore. It's great with the Ascent series because they do have wider jars than the original series, which these wider jars aren't the greatest for like smoothies. They're not the greatest for smoothies or banana ice cream because you really do have to fill it up quite a bit more to get it to come down through the vacuum and actually blend things, but it's great for a food processor. So I'll use this to like chop up pico de gallo or different salsas. I'll make sauerkraut with this thing, things like that. I definitely use my Vitamix for. And then the other thing that I have for this, which I still want to get the smaller ones, but they have these little blender bottles that come with it. So this is great if I wanted to make a smaller smoothie. I actually use it for salad dressings or if I'm making a pasta sauce or cashew sour cream or something like that. I use this. This is a very expensive blender, again, like the Kaku. We also do have a Ninja blender. Um, it's just the single, it's like this, but it's a little bit wider. I'll put a picture of it here. I don't have it here right now. It's at my parents' condo. That one is also really great. I, I think it was $70 for that blender at Walmart. So if you want, a blender that's really going to just blast the crap out of your stuff and really blend it up well. I have made dressings and sauces and stuff like that in there and I've had no issues. It's basically been the same as the Vitamix. I personally just really like my Vitamix, but if I didn't have three or four hundred dollars to spend on a blender, um, I'd definitely get the Ninja Blender. I wasn't planning on mentioning this, but since we're talking about blenders, I just thought of it. Um, I highly recommend everybody gets an immersion blender. So this is a stick blender and these work really well for salad dressings. If I'm making a creamy soup, I don't have to try and transfer like a hot liquid from my Instant Pot into my Vitamix. I can just stick this in my Instant Pot and blend up whatever I want to blend up. Um, so I use it a lot for corn chowder. I'll use it for pea soup, any kind of like soup that I make. If I'm making a pasta sauce, sometimes I make marinara sauce from scratch. I, st I still like to just kind of blend it up to make it really creamy and stuff. This is definitely worth it. I think this was $20 on Amazon. I will link all the appliances that I have down in the description box for you guys. The next thing that I use pretty frequently is my air fryer. So this is an air fryer that a company sent me. It's been probably six months that I've had it and I haven't mentioned it yet. Sorry to the company that sent me this, Omar. I really like this. So before I had this one, I had the New Wave air fryer. And personally, I didn't like it very much because it was really small. It took a long time to heat up. This one, as you can see, is like massive. I can cook so much stuff in this air fryer. And what I like about it the most, there is no um, plastic on the inside of this air fryer. So this is all metal. This is the fry pan that you just can take out. And that's what I like about it because some of the air fryers do have a lot of plastic parts on the inside of them and it can make your food taste like plastic. Um, so this one, I definitely like. I don't know if this one is on Amazon, but I will leave the link for it below. If you have 
an oven I wouldn't highly suggest getting an air fryer because an air fryer to me like it's it's like a mini oven it's like a convection oven so it'll heat stuff up it blows a lot of air around but it doesn't fry things so the number one reason that I would think that it's really good for people is if you eat any kind of like vegan processed junk food say you like guardian tenders or the meatballs or um, field roast sausages or whatever I always throw that stuff in here just because it does get rid of a lot of the oil that's in it so you'll see like all the oil on the bottom of the pan when you're done cooking it instead of it you know putting it on a pan and having it just cook in the oil and then be really oily cooks off a lot of the oil and that's one of the things that I like about it and why I would think it would be different than an oven but if you're just making oil free vegan food or oil free fries or cauliflower wings or whatever and your food doesn't have any oil in it it's gonna turn out basically the same as it will in your oven my next favorite appliance is the Cuisinart Griddler so this Cuisinart Griddler I like it because it's totally non-stick some people say that the the sticky the non-stick part is actually has some chemicals in it I don't cook on it all that often, so I don't really care that much. I know it sounds really bad, but this thing, I like to cook hash browns on it. I'll cook pancakes on it. The griddle that it comes with has two sides, so you can cook flat things or you can cook, you know, like burgers or something like that on here. You can buy separate waffle plates for it. So I love things where you can make it and it's a multi-tool, probably because I live in a 200 square foot house. But I really like this because it's different from the George Foreman. I used to have a George Foreman and it didn't have all these fancy components to it. So if you're looking for a good appliance where you can cook really truly oil-free foods on it, um, I would highly recommend this because anytime I know that anything is possibly going to stick, so hash browns, I can't cook them in a pan, I can't cook pancakes in a pan because my non-stick pans just are not good enough. So I always cook them on here. I would highly recommend getting one of these. Um, I've seen them in the stores for $170 before. Actually, I saw it at Kohl's for that much money. And I think they're way cheaper on Amazon. I wanna say they're like 70 bucks on Amazon at the very most. Um, but again, I'll put the link down below. So this is another one that I get asked about all the time. My juicer, this is an Omega VRT juicer. I don't remember the exact number that goes behind it but it is a cold press juicer. Um, I've had this for probably three years and I love it. It's very easy to clean. It's not like a centrifugal juicer, so it doesn't heat up any of the um, components when you're making it. And then you can also use this to make nut milk. So I can put like cashews and stuff right in this thing and it will make cashew milk, which is really cool. This is another spendy one. I think it is probably like two, $300. Um, but it's definitely worth it if you like drinking a lot of juice. But it's just something that I definitely get asked about all the time is what kind of juicer is this. Um, I would highly recommend this one. I would actually highly recommend all the appliances that I have because I feel like I've gone through a lot of different ones. Like before I had an Omega centrifugal juicer, just one of the cheap like $90 ones, and it broke within like a year. I've had a lot of appliances break on me or break down or... Um, like they'll start falling apart like some of the I had a rice cooker before that one and the coating on the inside of the pan started just like flaking off so everything that I'm saying here I would highly recommend for you guys and then the last thing that I probably use the least often is this little presto popcorn maker I really like this because you can make air oil free air fried popcorn you just put you plug it in you pour popcorn in here and then it just like heats up the kernels and pops it out. We don't really use this thing very often, probably a few times a month, but it's so much cheaper to make your own popcorn than to buy it in a bag. And then when it's in a bag, it usually has a lot of salt or a lot of oil. Um, and this thing's pretty cheap. I think it was like 20 bucks on Amazon. So I'll leave the link for that below as well. I've had, I had somebody actually ask me on Instagram if I had to choose one or two of my appliances, which ones would I choose? It would definitely be my Instant Pot and my Vitamix just because I, if I had an Instant Pot, I wouldn't need a rice cooker. I would be able to cook basically most things except for anything that you need to like fry or cook in an oven. And then with a the Vitamix, you can make smoothies and stuff in there, but you can also make juices if you have a nut milk bag. So if you do invest in a Vitamix, um, or maybe you're deciding between a Vitamix and a juicer, I would go with the Vitamix because you can make juices with the Vitamix. You just have to have a nut milk bag to extract all the fiber from the blended juice. But 
yeah i don't think i could live without the instant pot and the vitamix just because i'm able to make pretty much everything i need from salad dressing smoothies soups juices um rice stews lentils all kinds of stuff like you can make vegan meatballs in the instant pot you can steam stuff in the instant pot i have a steamer tray that i use for it that i was going to mention um, but if you just get a nice little steamer tray you can pop this into your instant pot i use it to steam everything i use it to make seitan i use it for everything so i hope this video was helpful for you guys let me know any questions or comments that you have down below and i'll see you in the next one